John 4.35 Non e vos dicitis quod ad hoc quatuor menses sunt, et messis venit? Ecce dico vobis levate oculos vestros, et videte regiones quia albae sunt, iam ad messem. Do you not say that still there are four months and the harvest time comes? Look, I say to you, lift up your eyes and see the fields that they are white already for the harvest. Here Jesus is continuing to teach after the encounter with the woman at the well, and he's discoursing with the disciples about the evangelical or evangelistic harvest that they may reap, uh, as he has just been doing by declaring his identity as the Messiah to the woman at the well. And there's a few interesting features going on here. The grammar is not terribly complicated, but there are some interesting vocabulary items to comment on. The first is nonne which you should recognize simply as non, that negation that we're so familiar with, plus ne, that enclitic particle that indicates a question. Non ne, is it not the case? Is it not the case that such and such is happening or is true? So that's going to introduce a question, and we're going to put our question mark here, add in our modern punctuation. We're also going to have a quotation starting at eke, Okay, so what does he say first? First of all, we need to notice he's addressing you, plural. Second person, plural, more than one person. That is the disciples. We see that in all of these words. Vos, vobis, westros. Do you all not say, dicitis, second person, plural, present, active, indicative, do you not say that, and we need to remember here that frequently in late Latin, instead of the accusative infinitive construction for indirect speech that we find in classical Latin more commonly, frequently in later Latin, and especially in the Vulgate, we find quad, or as we will see later, quia, corresponding to English, that introducing a subordinate clause. Do you not say, are you not in the habit of saying amongst yourselves, in other words, and here is the putative quotation of what people say amongst themselves, what the disciples and people like them say amongst themselves. Still, ad hook, we've talked about this word before, it's a very useful one. Still, there are four menses and the messes comes. Now, we might expect or at least supply in our mind the word tunk here, and then the messes comes, but it's not in the Greek text, and it's not really necessary for context. That can just help us understand what's going on here. So he's saying, isn't this a common saying among you? There's still four months to go, and then the harvest will come, okay? And what we have here actually is the present tense, as you can see, of wenio wenire, but we can translate it idiomatically in the future because in English, we would use the future tense here. We'd say, there's still four months left and then the harvest will come. But in Greek and in this Latin translation of the original Greek New Testament text, you can get away with saying idiomatically, there are still four months and the harvest comes at the end of that four months in the present tense. Messus is a fun word to look at here. It is a third declension noun, it's feminine, and it is one of those fun I stem nouns. So this is a good time to go back to your reference grammar or the textbook that you used to learn and look up the third declension special class of I stem nouns. There's some interesting variations there for you to review. Generally, it's pretty easy to recognize these even if you don't remember all of the special things that are going on with I stem nouns but um, it's good to review if you're a bit rusty. Messus, the harvest. Now, it's worth noting that messus can mean either the harvest in the sense of the stuff that is harvested, that is the actual crops that are reaped, or it can mean the harvest in the sense of harvest time, a particular time of year. And it's the latter senses in view, the, the time when the harvest happens. So he says, don't you all say this amongst yourselves? Eke, 
corresponding to Greek idu. Look, pay attention. Diko wobis, as Jesus so often says, I say to you, and look at the contrast here, which frequently occurs in this as in all the Gospels, you say, I say. Now, it's not so much a contrast here. He's, he's using an expression in common use in order to explain something that he wants them to understand on a deeper level. But this is very characteristic of the way that Jesus talks. You say, or you have heard it said by others, but I say this. What does he say? Lewate oculos. This is a second person plural present imperative here. Lift up. Levo leware. Lift up what? Oculos vuestros, your eyes. And see the regiones. Here we're going to say in English fields. In classical Latin, it only rarely carried that meaning. It usually meant something more general, like an area or a zone of some larger territory. But in the time of later Latin, when this translation was produced, regio could just mean field or countryside plot. So regione is here clearly from context, the fields, the countryside. Look at the fields that they are white already ad mesem for the harvest, for the purpose of reaping. Now, this is a bit of a peculiar construction. Hopefully you noticed. Videte regiones quia albae sunt. There's a technical term for this. I'll give it to you in just a moment. But if you look at another verse in a different book, if you look at Luke 12, 27, particularly in the King James translation into English, you will find this famous bit. Consider the lilies how they grow. Now, this isn't really idiomatic English, and it probably wasn't really idiomatic in 1611 either, but there's a certain poetic power to expressing things this way. Why? Because we're transposing the subject of a dependent clause into a main clause. Let me just show you how that works. What would we typically find in English? We'd find, consider how the lilies grow, where how the lilies grow is dependent on consider. What are we to consider? We're to consider how the lilies grow, right? But sometimes in English, and this is what the KJV translators did, you can drop that subject a little bit earlier in the sentence to create sort of a bit of anticipation or emphasis and say, consider the lilies, namely with respect to how they grow. Grammatically, we call this prolepsis, which is a Greek word that basically just means anticipation. And this is what we have here. What would we expect? We would expect videte quia regiones albae sunt, right? See that the fields are white. That would be a more typical word order, perhaps. But here are Latin translators actually following the Greek text very closely, and he's including even that prolepsis. See the fields that they are white. But this need not confuse us. All he's saying is, look around you. We're ready for the harvest. And the last thing we want to mention here is that yam, which is in the Greek text, meaning already, yam in Latin can also mean now and some other things, of course, but here contextually it means already. This actually really truly belongs to the next verse, that is to John 4.36. However, in this translation, it's been included partly because of the lack of punctuation in the original Greek text in John 4.35, where it slightly alters the meaning. Not very deeply, it just simply makes it sound a little bit more urgent. And we can see why a translator might have been inclined to include it in this verse rather than the next. 